What's happening, you guys? Yeah, that damn noise again. Alright, uh, I'm back from home time here uh, on southbound 215, about to get on 10 West in San Bernardino, California. I'm uh, going to be picking up uh, another one of the famous Walmart Colton loads. Uh, they actually, now, first I'll say the my last pickup in Lemoore that I dropped in the San Bernardino yard, uh, I haven't even worked on the footage yet as of uh, right now, but of course by the time you see this, you probably will have already seen that video. But it'll be a much shorter time frame. You're going to think, oh yeah, enjoy your home time. Well, guess what? It'll very, probably be one more day after you see that one when you'll see this one. So, no wonder I thought you were going on home time. Uh, yeah, I just didn't touch the Lamour footage until... Uh, I still haven't touched it. As far as doing any editing on it's concerned, but I will have that done soon enough. Anyway... Uh, I ended up getting my medical appointments all done and dental and all that and um, that kind of a veg day yesterday. I wanted to go out and do stuff, but um, before I got home, you know, from my home time, I had a pinched nerve in my back. I uh, did from a displaced disc. Uh, I have... Uh, worn cartilage in between a couple of my vertebrae down there in the lower back and I think by the way I was laying it back there um, the last couple days before I went on home time uh, might, have had a, might have contributed a lot to that whatever the case uh, yeah my back uh, was was tweaked on the lower end and still to this day right now I'm here experiencing uh, Pain, I, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it's not it's not sharp pain, I would necessarily say. Um, it's more like a, like a hot, like a heat pain, I guess. I don't know. Like a heat radi like radiating across a large area kind of pain uh, on my left hip area and then also my left knee. So that's a, kind of a smoking gun and it's a sciatica nerve that was uh, pinched. Uh, hopefully that'll resolve uh, as the swelling goes down. Uh, Alright, we're getting off the freeway here at Rancho Avenue, the way I usually like to go here. Um, I'll tell you what, it's, yeah, it hasn't been too fun because uh, you know, as long as I'm laying down or sitting down or... Um, Yeah, that's where you're supposed to be on the other side, dude. There's a sidewalk over on the other side of the bridge. I think there's even a sign there telling you you're supposed to be on that side if you're going to be walking through here. Alright, anyway, uh, let's say, yeah, as long as I'm laying down or sitting down or actually to, to an extent even walking, it doesn't really seem to bother me at all, but if I'm standing at all, uh, a lot of the time, if I even just stand for like 10 seconds, it's, uh, it starts getting to where I go. Oh, it's, it's driving me nuts. Uh, where it becomes uh, very discomfort, uh, very uncomfortable and painful. And I just want to be uh, be doing something different. So that yard work itself, we needed to get done. Wouldn't have minded getting out and doing other stuff too. But yeah, just with the discomfort I was in uh, it was hard to want to do anything and I actually feel for my wife because she constantly has uh, like 24-7 medical issues with her neurological system uh, she's always in that kind of pain uh, throughout her body for the most part so yeah but she still uh, you know, she still rocks it with getting stuff done uh, you know, she makes me proud Actually makes me feel bad like I'm not doing enough, to be honest with you. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna make the right turn on to Agua Monza here. Um let's see, yeah, we okay, we're clear on both sides over here. No left turn traffic. Okay, uh 
I already called the shipper up to find out if I was going to be live loading or dropping hook. Uh, mainly so I can know if I needed to pre-cool my trailer and or if I need to put reefer fuel in this trailer that I just acquired from our San Bernardino yard. The trailer was there with only half a tank of fuel. As a reminder, you're not supposed to be dropping trailers at drop yards or at all with less than three quarters. So how I got in the yard with only half a tank, that's another question mark. Whoever, whoever dropped it there didn't do their job. It's just a question of was it a, a contractor? Because yeah, JCT used a lot of contractors here in California, basically third party companies. Uh, yeah, they do power only, just pull our trailers and maybe uh, pick up loads up north and bring it back to our drop yard and then maybe grab another empty uh, or something. Or they might grab a loaded out of our drop yard and deliver it and bring the empty back or something along that line. So pretty fair amount of that that goes on in our in the yard there. Alright, uh, well this thing only has half a tank and the shipper did confirm that it's already, uh, it is a drop and hook and it's already been loaded since about four or so this morning so and right now it's uh, about 16:35 ish just after 16:35 local time so it's been ready for about a good 12 hours now now i could use some more tractor fuel anyway uh, before i get out of california so i'm gonna go ahead and get tractor and reefer fuel from the Rialto Travel Center right up over here. I'm gonna go uh, overshoot the shipper by just a, you know by a block and fill up my tanks there. Or not fill them up, but get enough tractor fuel to get me out of California and enough reefer fuel to um, at least enough where I can drop it. You know, I'll probably fill it all the way up and I'll come over here and pick the load up. Alright, so what else? Uh, I do have my boys at the house still, Christian and Bradley. Uh, hello. Damn, dipshit. So why don't you slide over? Yeah, let's just go ahead and stop right in the middle of a freaking road in a curve. Dig -dig -dig. Come on, I know some of you guys know where that comes from. Dig -dig -dig. Man, I haven't seen that show in a while. Of course, uh, yeah, the show went, uh, went kaput after Joe Rogan slammed him and uh, made uh, basically uh, said that a lot of his stuff was stolen material from other comedians. So, yeah, he kind of lost favor with the public after that. Sonta Logistics, I guess that's what it says. Alright, um, I've been getting mixed we're, uh, mixed here um, info on whether or not we can still get reefer fuel from this truck stop here. Uh, if not, we can. Uh, there's an override thing I can do, uh, an override macro here on my uh, uh, on my Qualcomm that I can send in, and they'll uh, they can unlock it for uh, just temporarily to do this. Um, we used to always be able to get reefer fuel here because for the longest time the only the closest places you can get reefer fuel from was uh, Royal Truck Stop on the other side of I, uh, the 215 freeway from here or you'd have to go all the way out to Ontario. Um, within the last, I don't know, a couple of years, uh, a couple of new Flying J's have opened up, one in Harupa Valley right by, uh, right down the street from the Costco DC in Metaloma. And another Flying J in Fontana, uh, just two two uh, two lots over from the Peterbilt dealer that I go to sometimes. Um, those might have had an impact because I've had other people on our Facebook group saying that they were not able to get reefer fuel here, but someone just said today that they were able to get it. So I don't know. I use that hood mirror to see if any uh, red light runners are coming. So we'll do what we can here. I'll, uh, I'll plan on uh, possibly needing to do the override form, or override macro, uh, but if all goes well, it won't. Uh, what's this truck doing over here? 
There's a truck that's over there. It's coming the opposite direction. Oh, looks like he's going. He's turning around. You're turning around or trying to park. Yeah, looks like he might be trying to park. So. Let's see if we got any other JCTs here. Usually, I always see at least uh, one or uh, a couple of JCTs here. Yeah, it looks like I might see one. Uh, no, I don't know. No, that's not a JCT. He's got Arizona plate. Yeah, there is a JCT down there. Black KW. Okay, we'll go up to the far forward pump and see what we can do here. I know I want to get tractor fuel here for sure, so I don't have to stop in Barstow or Esprit on the way. And we might need to go a little further forward. I want to make sure I get my door open though. All right. Okay, so we'll get uh, get fueled up and then we'll go pick our load up. All right, you guys, finally done here. Oh man, what a pain in the ass! So, check with that guy back there is doing. Uh, or that truck back there. Uh, blown me back. Okay, so well, first let's figure out which way we want to go. Let's go ahead and make a right. I can go either direction from here. I'm going to go ahead and turn right, though. I just barely missed that curve. Alright, so... Went in there first. Uh, with the understanding that I might possibly still be able to get a reefer fuel. So I went in and got... I tried to get uh, both tractor and reefer. Didn't help that I forgot the, the truck number. I had it almost right, but the very last digit I was getting a 5 instead of an 8. But I meant to say 8. Um, so I had to come back and figure out which uh, what, tri uh, what trip number I really needed to give them. Come back in, get in line again. Only to find out that I cannot get reefer fuel without doing a manual override. And... So I went ahead and got tractor fuel first, about 70 gallons, uh, really just enough to make sure I had no problem. Uh, that's more than enough to get me out of California, but you know, the price there wasn't too bad relative to the average. Uh, average is like 571 or something like that, and it was like 609 there. It's really not too bad, to, uh, all things considered. Consider, uh, keep in mind, this is California, and... Uh, the pilot in Hesperia, when I stopped there to grab a drink, was uh, 680. Shut up. It was 685 for for the cash price, so quite a bit cheaper here. Anyway, yeah, I ended up just getting the tractor fuel first. Then I pulled forward, had to send in the manual override thing. And I went inside, I wasn't sure how long that would take, so I went straight up there, trying to get the transaction done. Turns out it, uh, it hadn't done the override yet uh, at dispatch uh, in Sepulpa, so I got back in line at the end of the line there and said, oh, maybe, uh, maybe I'll have it done by the time I come back up to the counter. And sure enough, yeah, and, uh, only like one other person got help by the time I noticed my uh, message on the transflow saying that uh, it's been, the override is good, go ahead and get my fuel and let them know when I'm done. So, good to go finally, but it took a good 20 minutes. Should have only been like half that time. I didn't even get that much fuel. But it is what it is. Uh, we got time to work with, and it's currently just uh, not quite 1710, and I have an 1800 appointment time. They like said I already know that the load is ready to pick up, so it's just a matter of getting checked in, drop my empty, go check in at the blue office, which is right over here to, on the other side of this wall here. Uh, go get my bills from them, and then go find my trailer, pre trip it, scale it, and head out. Don't see a line of trucks here, that's a good thing. Yeah, nobody here at all except a bobtail. So I 
know he's not going to take long. That's not a, no, that's not a JCT. It's somebody else. Alright, well, at least we're good to go here. Though. we got a clean trailer full of reefer fuel now, and I believe we're going to have plenty of time to work with on the load. Um, or at least I, we might. I gotta double check. Cause I know I can do it in three shifts. Uh, but I do have to run some pretty good long shifts to do it. Come on. Uh, right that shipper. Hi. Okay, I'm gonna get checked in and uh, press on from here. All right, guys, we are ready to go drop our trailer here. What is this guy doing? I don't know. Looks like he's about to get yelled at by somebody, though. Or at least five. they're finally trying to find out why he's sitting there. Let's see if he moves. <laughs> I mean, he might just be waiting for his doctor to uh, open up. I don't know, but yeah, he knows. I've had times where they give me a hard time when I'm all I'm doing is uh, trying to slide my tandems or or something, and they had a yard jockey trying to tell me I had to move. Like I'm not moving. I, you know, I'm not. I'm far from new to this place, and I know how things work here. I'm not in anybody's way where I'm at. I'm only going to be here a few minutes, so my butt out. <laughs> okay. Do you see that yard jockey coming? We'll see which way he's going to go. And we'll drop the trailer in row F, which is the one where that purple Freightliner is at right now. Uh, you can also drop an Echo, which is over here by this black KW. Uh, not the row that's facing pointed right at me, but uh, the one that faces uh, across the lane. Of course, you guys already, should already know. Or at least a lot of you guys who are used to me coming here all the time would know. Oh my god, this guy didn't even have his doors open. Well, I mean, there, there technically is enough room here where you can possibly open your doors, even when uh, you're all, almost all the way back, but what do you want to bet this guy is going to block me from getting to my door now? Going to block me, I mean, block me from getting to the drop spots just to open his trailer doors. So you should have them open before you even back it in there, dude. There's another JCT bobtail over there. Who is that? I couldn't quite read. It went by too fast between the between the tractor and the trailer to this Guzar Brothers truck. He might be alright, but let me see if I can get by him real quick. Alright, um, let's see if yeah, there's an opening right here, but. go for this one here because this guy might I'm worried about this guy here so I'll widen the my setup here put her there next to Covenant Southern Refrigerated same thing same company
3957 Alpha, something like that. Oh, 3957 India. Okay. I'm going to go check in here. Go around the other side of the building, we'll get checked in. Especially for how long our trailer has been here. It's probably going to be in this row that's pointing right at me here. It could be 6362 or probably several other JCT trailers in that row. 7311 I see and a couple others further down. So I don't think I've told you guys yet where this load is going to. Uh, this one's going to be going to Toma, Wisconsin. Even better, uh, because it's got a decent number of miles on it. I actually got, got offered uh, several different uh, Colton loads. I uh, had options between Falls Valley, Harrisonville, Ocholata. Or Toma, I'm like, yeah, I like Toma. Let's go there. We got 4220, Delta 4225. Um, so I'm going to be going for that one. Yeah, that's a decent number of trucks sitting here. Hopefully I can come over here without uh, disrupting this guy's backing. I mean, get up right next to this Solta guy here. I'm just trying to avoid uh, disrupting this guy's uh, correction space. I think he's going uh, bowling right now. All right. I'm going to stop right there that way even though there's a little bit more room for him to work with and help. Funny, I, I brought six four uh, six three eight one here with me, and I'm gonna be picking up six four eight one. Who's that there? It's four thousand five. Four thousand five is a black one, and then Delta forty two twenty five. to use both lanes here. Yeah, you can use the other lane. This is the only an exit only lane. Alright. So, yeah, I think he doesn't, uh, Delta 4138. That number sounds familiar. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't know that you can, uh, that that gate there is only, is outbound only. So, I think he might have I've been under the impression that you have to go to, uh, to the right side there. Let's so get by this guy real quick. Get out of JCT's way. Uh, we go slow because I see JCT. There it is over on the right. Alright. That's why I wanted to go slow so I knew I had to get my. Give myself a chance to see both sides of the, of the lane. I'm very 
often I find my loaded on this side. It's usually always on the other side. It's very rare that I find my loaded here. It's, it's pretty common for loaded to be over here, but... I'm kind of hard pressed to remember if I've ever picked up a loaded from this room. Alright, so we'll get that. Uh, Get our drop hook done here, inspect this trailer and all that kind of stuff, and um, get out of here. I don't even see, I don't even look at how heavy the load is yet. 29.478, so it's not even that heavy. Let's get these tandem slid where I have more like them to be, which is the 40 foot mark. They were sitting all the way forward at the 38 and a half. I don't like to run with them all the way forward because it's more tail swing. More tail swing, more risk of having problems backing into spots. I mean, it's double edged sword. It's, you turn more tightly, but you also got more tail swing to worry about. Let me get my uh, tool out. As a reminder, proper pre-trip means going underneath your trailer and looking at everything. Look at all the brake components. This one here was dropped with a uh, slack adjuster clevis pin missing. I'm going to show you. This is super easy to spot. Right there, where the slack adjuster hooks up to this brake here, it is missing. And I should, not, I should not be finding trailers like that, but I do find them like that all the time. It's a huge, huge giveaway that somebody's not doing their pre-trips when I find that. Because if you can't, if you don't see that, I know for sure you're not going underneath the trailer to look. Got another problem on here that I noticed. This could have been someone stealing. More likely a mechanic when they did a tire change. Got to inflate hose for their right front inner is missing. This looks like a pretty new tire, so highly likely that whenever that tire got replaced, whoever changed that tire didn't put the auto inflate hose back on and the driver didn't notice it either. I'm not gonna lie, I've missed that before as well. 
That's not a out of service problem either, but Lord knows if it has a system, it should have the, the hose. So I'm gonna try to get both those problems fixed and round. Alright guys, let's go ahead and scale this load and it'll more than likely be more than fine. But I want to know what my gross weight really is. Um, I only have uh, a little over 50 PSI load on my suspension. Oh, that's who she drives. Well, I was talking to that girl. She's on her way to Bedford, Pennsylvania. Yeah, there were two drivers on the way to Bedford, Pennsylvania. Her and uh, the Punjabi guy. And the guy, like, I didn't know they even had a DC in Bedford. Wonder how long that thing's even been there. I've never heard of anybody going to Bedford from here before until today. So, uh, Pottsville now is pretty common to hear about. Pottsville, Pennsylvania, it's up on I-81, uh, north of I-80. Been a long time since I've been there. JCT used to not do any loads there, but I recently, uh, I just noticed somebody was, uh, actually one of my uh, friends who I would call a mentor, uh, he just delivered in Pottsville today, I think it was. Alright, we got 11.4-ish. Make sure all my tires are on. Alright, so we're not even 30,000 pounds there. It's uh, more like 29 and change. Yeah, you take that weight and subtract the 11 for that I already had. Now we'll take the gross weight. Uh, this guy's kind of blocking all but the 63,000 part, but it's plenty. Of, it's enough for me to know that it's uh, that I'm good to go on my weights. Grace Logistics Incorporated. Yeah, they, they got to look Punjabi. Um, now I don't I don't know uh, Punjabis if they're they tend to be Sikh or they tend to be Hindu. He's not wearing a turban, so I don't know if the guys uh, maybe those are the guys who are have Punjabi. Uh, ethnicity can educate me on now what is a what is the usual um, religious practice of you guys who are non-turban wearing Punjabis I know a lot of you guys are Sikhs but uh, and I know that Sikhs uh, follow uh, what's that Guru Nisra I think his name is but I don't know if that would be called a god I think he's just a prophet um, like a um, I know it's a monotheistic religion. I just don't know who uh, don't know who the actual god is, though, or if they have a name for him. And uh, what do Punjabis actually follow? This is stupid having a. Come on. Guys, let's uh, get out of here now. Got my uh, departure and loaded calls sent. And we're going to head back out of here the same way we came in. Uh, we'll make a left here. Looks like we're good here. See a JCT pulling away from the curb here. stock of what I might have 
intended to talk about, but may have forgot. Uh, I did say that uh, this load will be going to uh, Toma, Wisconsin. It's right by where I-90 and I-94 meet up on the west end of Wisconsin, or on the in western Wisconsin, I would say. Uh, Last time I went that way, I went ahead and took I-15 up to Cove Fort, Utah, and then took I-70 across from there over to Denver, and then I-76 up to uh, Big Country, uh, Big Camp, what am I thinking, Big Springs, Nebraska, what am I thinking, Big Country, and uh, down in I-80 across to Des Moines, then uh, I-35 up into Minnesota. Alright, we are good here. What the hell? Seriously? I don't need that distraction while I'm trying to make a turn. Alright. I don't know if this guy even knows how we can go this way. <laughs> I know something he doesn't apparently, or he's just so used to going uh, that way. This guy the one I just saw at the truck stop. Yeah, it is. I was just talking to him because I was kind of admiring the way his T680 looks. He's a Spanish speaker, very little English, so I was speaking to him in uh, some Spanish, asking him what year his truck was. It was a, 22, a 2022 T680, that's what he told me. Okay, uh, now JCT drivers, I-70 between the Utah, Colorado line and Denver in the winter time, we're not allowed to go that way. Uh, usually if I want to go that way, but maybe the, the time of year or weather conditions give me reason to not want to go that way or not be allowed to go that way, I tend to go up I-15 to the Salt Lake City area and get on I-80 there. Um, I-80 though, if I go that way, I mean, if I take the Salt Lake City route, it's going to be more miles. I know I can do three long shifts. Um, last time I went this way, I went to, um, I ended my day in Green River, Utah. And then the next shift, I ran from there to, where was it at? In, Nebraska. I think it was somewhere. I think I thought about stopping in Lexington, Nebraska, but I wanted to go a little bit further than that to, uh, to hopefully have a little bit easier shift on the last lake to, uh, from there to Toma. So uh, you can do it at three long, long shifts, or decently long shifts. Um, we'll see how it goes, though. Uh, I'm going to check my ETA. Um, see how much extra time I have there. If I, uh, if I don't, uh, the load won't be scheduled for delivery until um, sometime tomorrow, more than likely. Uh, but tomorrow is the Fourth of July, so I don't even know if it'll be scheduled tomorrow. I might have to wait until Tuesday, the fifth, before I'll have any idea what time of day it's going to deliver. All right, we'll see how that goes. Uh, just plan on not knowing the appointment time until Tuesday. Uh, but if all goes well, maybe no tomorrow, uh, possibly. And that'll give me a, some some decent idea how much time I have to work with as far as taking naps or maybe an extra 10 hour break if I want to take an extra 10. And see how it goes. Northbound on Rancho Avenue. We're gonna get on eastbound 10, and north on 215, and then north on 15, all the way to Utah. Uh, Salt Lake City route is about 50 miles longer than the, the I-70 to I-76 route. Uh, depending on how heavy you are, is that there? to see what that is on a median in the center plane. Oh, it's 
piece of cardboard. Alright, so, yeah, depending on how heavy the load is, like if I'm below 70,000 pounds like I am, I'm much more likely to go ahead and give, uh, give uh, I-70 across uh, a go this time of year, but if I'm going to be up over 70,000 pounds, uh, much more likely I'd, I'd rather just go to the Salt Lake City area and then go across Wyoming. But I'm, I'm, I'm below 70, but not by a long way, so it'll probably, yeah, I'll get slowed down by, uh, by the terrain there. But hopefully not too bad. We'll see how it goes. I'll check weather, too, and... But tentatively, that's what, uh, the route I'm thinking about going, the same way I came uh, last time I went to Toma. Alright, you're gonna stay green for me, light? Yeah. Just trying to... Actually, I swung out a little bit wider than I meant to because the... I got my foot caught up uh, halfway between the throttle and the brake and got a little fixated on making sure I was only on the brake. A little distraction caused me to lose just enough attention to where the truck was going to where it came out a little wider. It was fine though. Alright, so that's going to wrap this one up though. Uh, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out and watching this and uh, see what I'm up to. And um, here, I guess I will see you all when I get to Toma, Wisconsin. Alright? Have a great night, and I'll see you in Toma.